Kentucky, Iowa, Kansas, Maryland, Louisiana, Maine, Minnesota, Massachusetts, Michigan, Montana, Mississippi, Missouri, New Hampshire, Nebraska, Nevada, New York, New Jersey, New Mexico, Ohio, North Carolina, North Dakota, Pennsylvania, Oklahoma, Oregon, South Dakota, Utah, South Carolina, Rhode Island, Tennessee, Texas, Washington, Vermont, Virginia, Wyoming, Wisconsin, West Virginia, Mexico, Europe, Los Angeles, Chicago, San Francisco. Let's try that one again. One more time. Arizona, Colorado, Florida, Indiana, Kentucky, Maryland, Minnesota, Montana, New Hampshire, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, South Dakota, Utah, Washington, Wyoming, Mexico, West Virginia, Virginia, Texas, South Carolina, Oregon, North Dakota, New Mexico, Nevada, Missouri, Michigan, Maine, Kansas, Illinois, Hawaii, Delaware, California, Alaska, Alabama, Arkansas, Connecticut, Georgia, Idaho, Iowa, Louisiana, Massachusetts, Mississippi, Nebraska, New Jersey, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Rhode Island, Tennessee, Vermont, Wisconsin, Los Angeles, Chicago, San Francisco, Europe. Okay, let's try this. This one is medial Y words. Okay, medial Y words. Carrier, <coughs> audience, video, canyon, heavier, previous, luckiest, premium, orient, curious, radio, courteous, medallion, euphoria, amnesia, aviator, guardian, jovial, radiant, solarium, brilliant, union, lenient, area, stereo, aerial, furrier, tedium, earlier, worrier, earliest, cameo, medium, superior, menial, ophelia, calcium, anterior, radium, cranial, nausea, William, Harriet, Daniel, Danielle, Celia, Lobelia, Geranium, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Gloria, Plumeria. Okay, this is consonants out of keyboard order. Down on the old cattle ranch, sitting on the porch bench, was an old beetle buzzard. Beetle buzzards are a raunchy bunch of crass birds given to the task of crunching on larch bark and bunch grass. Sometimes they hunch in birch trees or lurch at old folks' knobby knees, causing unsettling yelps in the crisp, brisk dawn air. Beetle buzzards are known to have battles over old rattling bones and rattlesnake rattles. Old folks throw canoe paddles, 
beer bottles, old noodles, rattling cans, and apple strudels to scare them away. Cattle ranchers feed them curdled milk and dangle wranglers spurs to hassle them. Beetle buzzards are forever haggling and scuffling over old carcasses and will jump in a puddle just to befuddle on lookers. Down on the old cattle ranch, sitting on the porch bench, was an old beetle buzzard. Beetle buzzards are a raunchy bunch of crass birds given to the task of crunching on larch bark and bunch grass. Sometimes they hunch in birch trees or lurch at old folks' knobby knees, causing unsettling yelps in the crisp, brisk dawn air. Beetle buzzards are known to have bitter battles over old rattling bones and rattlesnake rattles. Old folks throw canoe paddles, beer bottles, old noodles, rattling cans, and apple strudels to scare them away. Cattle ranchers feed them curdled milk and dangle wranglers spurs to hassle them. Beetle buzzards are forever haggling and scuffling over old carcasses and will jump in a puddle just to be fuddled on lookers. What did you do or say? I told him I didn't want to stall any longer and I would like to have the heroin weighed. It seemed light to me. Was there any response to that? Yes. Who responded? Mr. Weller. What did he say? He said they had a scale in their vehicle and that it would be a lot safer if he mm -hmm. went to their vehicle and brought the scale inside the apartment. And did you respond to that? Yes, I did. What did you say? I tried to assure him that it would take only a few minutes longer and that I would like to go to my vehicle where I had a scale. Also, that I would pay them at the same time. What happened then? Both defendants got dressed. What were they wearing up to this point? Mainly underclothes. After they got dressed, what happened? Mr. Bates, Mr. Weller, and I exited the apartment and proceeded toward my vehicle. And did you arrive at your vehicle? Yes, I did. What did you do then? I gave a pre-arranged arrest signal. What happened then? The other DEA agents placed Mr. Bates and Mr. Weller under arrest with reference to the aluminum foil packet, which you say you had seen. Where was it at this time? I maintained custody of it. And what, if anything, 
did you do with it? I performed a field test on it. What were the results of that field test? A positive reaction for opium. What did you do or say? I told him I didn't want to stall any longer and I would like to have the heroin weighed. It seemed light to me. Was there any response to that? Yes. Who responded? Mr. Weller. What did he say? He said they had a scale in their vehicle and that it would be a lot safer if he went to their vehicle and brought the scale inside the apartment. And did you respond to that? Yes, I did. What did you say? I tried to assure him that it would take only a few minutes longer and that I would like to go to my vehicle where I had a scale. Also that I would pay them at the same time. What happened then? Both defendants got dressed. What were they wearing up to this point? Mainly underclothes. After they got dressed, what happened? Mr. Bates, Mr. Weller, and I exited the apartment and proceeded toward my vehicle. And did you arrive at your vehicle? Yes, I did. What did you do then? I gave a pre-arranged arrest signal. What happened then? The other DEA agents placed Mr. Bates and Mr. Weller under arrest with reference to the aluminum foil packet which you say you had seen. Where was it at this time? I maintained custody of it. And what if anything did you do with it? I performed a field test on it. What did you do or say? I told him I didn't want to stall any longer and I would like to have the heroin weighed. It seemed light to me. Was there any response to that? Yes. Who responded? Mr. Weller. What did he say? He said they had a scale in their vehicle and that it would be a lot safer if he went to their vehicle and brought the scale inside the apartment. And did you respond to that? Yes, I did. What did you say? I tried to assure him that it would only take a few minutes longer and that I would like to go to my vehicle where I had a scale. Also that I would pay them at the same time. What happened then? Both defendants got dressed. What were they wearing up to this point? Mainly underclothes. After they got dressed, what happened? Mr. Bates, Mr. Weller, and I exited the apartment and proceeded toward my vehicle. And did you arrive at your vehicle? Yes, I did. What did you do then? I gave a pre-arranged arrest signal. What happened then? The other DEA agents placed Mr. Bates and Mr. Weller under arrest with reference to the aluminum foil packet which you say you had seen. Where was it at this time? I maintained custody of it. And what, if anything, did you do with it? I performed a field test on it. Will you state your name, please? Daniel A. Wells. How do you spell your last name? W-E-L-L-E-S. Mr. Wells, what is your home address? 1400 Forest Avenue. Is that in the city? Yes. How old are you, sir? 58. Do you work for Watson Press? That's right. How long have you worked for Watson Press? For 31 years. Do you have a target retirement date? No, I don't. What is the extent 
of your formal education. I graduated from a technical high school. What is your position with Watson Press? I assemble presses and I run presses. Are you also a serviceman? When emergencies come up, I go out. Are you familiar with the press involved in this case? Yes, I am. Did you participate in the assembly of it? I could have. There is a good chance I worked on that particular press in assembly. But you are not certain? No, sir. Would there be records available that would indicate the names of the Watson people that did work on the assembly? I doubt that very much. We don't keep that kind of a record. Do you recall anything unusual about this particular press? Well, it's like a sore thumb because the people specified that the guards should be painted a bright red. You said the guards are painted a bright red. Is that right? Yes, that's right. And the rest of the press was painted what color? It was painted gray. In your experience, is that one of the few times you have seen guards painted bright red? That's the only time I have seen them. Could you describe the guard to me? Well, on that particular press, there is a bull gear and a pinion on one side and a pulley on the other side. So that calls for two guards. I'm sorry, I lost you. There is a pulley guard. That's right. You called it a pulley guard? Yes. One pulley guard, that's right, it covers the pulley and the motor pulley. There is some kind of a shield that covers the pulley. Is that what you are saying? Yes. There is a metal plate of some kind, sheet metal. It is made to enclose the whole wheel. So that's painted red, vivid red, yes. Name the other guard that is painted red, a bull gear guard. Spell that, B-U-L-L. -L. All right, what does that guard? The bull gear actually drives the machine. It turns the crankshaft. Then there is a pinion that drives the bull gear from the pulley that is driven by the motor. And again, this is a metal plate, a metal guard. Mr. Speaker, my first piece of legislation was a proposed amendment to the Constitution to require a balanced federal budget. Obviously, this is in keeping with the voter priorities reflected not only in my district but across the country. My bill was one of several that was introduced during the 98th Congress, which reflected a sense of national priorities. Now, as we are entering the 98th Congress, I sense an even stronger national mandate to limit the spending of the federal government and require more diligent adherence to fiscal responsibility by our national legislators. Today, I am introducing a proposed constitutional amendment to require a balanced federal budget and to assure that the budget will be balanced by putting a lid on federal spending, not by increasing the tax burden of the American people. My resolution would require the gradual elimination of deficit spending within 30 months of ratification. My resolution would prohibit federal expenditures from exceeding revenues in recent years. As critical as the need to reduce excessive government spending and eliminate a deficit was three years ago, it is even more critical today. We are confronted with double digit inflation and record high interest rates that are crippling the economy. The majority of 
Congress has professed support for a balanced budget, 35 states have already approved measures that call for a constitutional convention to draft a constitutional amendment to balance the federal budget. The people have demanded action and this Congress can respond to their pleas. Our elected officials must exercise fiscal responsibility. I urge my colleagues to channel their energy and attention toward this goal in the opening days of the 99th Congress. Try that one again. Mr. Speaker, my first piece of legislation was a proposed amendment to the Constitution to require a balanced federal budget. Obviously, this is in keeping with the voter priorities reflected not only in my district but across the country. My bill was one of several that was introduced during the 98th Congress, which reflected a sense of national priorities. Now, as we are entering the 99th Congress, I sense an even stronger national mandate to limit the spending of the federal government and require more diligent adherence to fiscal responsibility by our national legislators. Today, I am introducing a proposed constitutional amendment to require a balanced federal budget and to assure that the budget will be balanced by putting a lid on federal spending, not by increasing the tax burden of the American people. My resolution would require the gradual elimination of deficit spending within 30 months of ratification. My resolution would prohibit federal expenditures from exceeding revenues in recent years. As critical as the need to reduce excessive government spending and eliminate a deficit was three years ago, it is even more critical today. We are confronted with double-digit inflation and record high interest rates that are crippling the economy. The majority of Congress has professed support for a balanced budget. 35 states have already approved measures that call for a constitutional convention to draft a constitutional amendment to balance the federal budget. The people have demanded action, and this Congress can respond to their pleas. Our elected officials must exercise fiscal responsibility. I urge my colleagues to channel their energy and attention toward this goal in the opening days of the 99th Congress. Roy Douglas? Yes, sir. Do you also know Paul Carter? Yes, I know him when I see him. Will you tell us where you were at the time you met Mr. Carter? I was at the Nelson Funeral Home. Was there a meeting there? Yes. About how many people were present? There were 10 or 12 people present. How did you get acquainted with Mr. Newman? Dr. Roberts had invited me to the meeting at the Nelson Funeral Home. Was Dr. Roberts at the meeting? Yes, he was. Did Dr. Roberts ever talk with you about Mr. Newman? Yes, he did. So before you went to the meeting at the Nelson Funeral Home, 
you were familiar with the business of the Newman Company. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Now, will you tell us what took place at that meeting? I am talking now about the meeting at the Nelson Funeral Home. Well, first I met Mr. Newman. I was a little early, so he talked with me alone for a short time. He told me about the things the company was going to do. Then it was time for the meeting to start. How many meetings did you attend altogether? I think I went to four of the meetings. Did you ever invest any money in the Newman Company? Yes, I bought four units for $4,000. Were any high pressure methods used on you to get you to buy stock? No, sir. Was the general scheme of the meetings to explain what the company was going to do? Yes, sir. Then you were offered stock in the company. Is that correct? That's correct. Let's try that one again. <laughs> You're off. You're way off tonight. <laughs> T-I-M-M-O-N-S. Mr. Timmons, have you ever met Mr. L. G. Newman, one of the defendants in this case? Yes, sir. Have you met Roy Douglas? Yes, sir. Do you also know Paul Carter? Yes, I know him when I see him. Will you tell us where you were at that time you met Mr. Carter? I was at the Nelson Funeral Home. Was there a meeting there? Yes. About how many people were present? There were 10 or 12 people present. Now, did you get acquainted with Mr. Newman? Dr. Roberts had invited me to the meeting at the Nelson Funeral Home. Was Dr. Roberts at the meeting? Yes, he was. Did Dr. Roberts ever talk with you about Mr. Newman? Yes, he did. So before you went to the meeting at the Nelson Funeral Home, you were familiar with the business of the Newman Company. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Now, will you tell us what took place at that meeting I am talking now about the meeting at the Nelson Funeral Home. Well, first I met Mr. Newman. I was a little early, so he talked with me alone for a short time. He told me about the things the company was going to do. Then it was time for the meeting to start. How many meetings did you attend altogether? I think I went to four of the meetings. Did you ever invest any money in the Newman Company? Yes, I bought four units for $4,000. Were any high pressure methods used on you to get you to buy stock? No, sir. Was the general scheme of the meetings to explain what the company was going to do? Yes, sir. Then you were offered stock in the company. Is that correct? That's correct. <laughs> Feels like it though when you hear it 14 times in a row, huh? <laughs> okay. Will you state your name, please? Sydney R. Timmons. How do you spell your last name? T-I-M-M-O-N-S, Mr. Timmons. 
Have you ever met Mr. L.G. Newman, one of the defendants in this case? Yes, sir. Have you met Roy Douglas? Yes, sir. Do you also know Paul Carter? Yes, I know him when I see him. Will you tell us where you were at the time you...